Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Webinar Wednesday by Smart Karma. I'm Michael Tegos. Today, I'm excited to welcome uh, Jesus Rodriguez Aguilar, who will present some of the key ideas in Europe's event-driven landscape as European markets try to navigate a number of challenges, including the ever-present pandemic, of course. Jesus is an event-driven analyst focusing on European markets across various sectors. He has recently served as economic and business advisor at the Spanish Con Congress in Madrid. And prior to that, he worked in the city of London as part of companies like Bloomberg, Merrill Lynch, and more. As always, uh, please feel free to send in your questions for Jesus throughout the webinar using the Q&A button on your Zoom app. Uh, and we will do our best to get to them during the Q&A section. Uh, please do not reshare the contents of the webinar without express permission. As always, we will have a recording available uh, afterwards. Jesus, thank you for being with us today. After my introduction, over to you for your presentation. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, hi, everyone there. First of all, um, Michael has done a terrific introduction. I will say that uh, in spite of my sounding French, I'm Spanish. Uh, this is something <laughs> I, 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 thought, I, I thought funny until I met a, a colleague from my MBA who, was, uh, who is American and speaks Spanish with a Brazilian accent. So please don't be discouraged by my accent. So anyway, after this, uh, we are into European event driven what's happening in this interesting space i'm going to focus today on european m a what is going on which sectors are hot i'm going to talk a little bit rights issues and then some of the traditional uh, topics in event driven space such as dual listed companies holding companies and share classes so with that i'm launching into m a m and in Europe, after some summer lull, deal activity is back. What is driving this? Valuations. Some of the cases, uh, some companies are being taken private, such as MassMobile, who was uh, giving some really, really excellent numbers in a super competitive Spanish space, Altis, this one has been driven by frustration from his main shareholder, Patrick Drahi, and probably he wants to just uh, take advantage of a low share price. There's industry consolidation, some of it, Spanish banks, telecom companies. And what I'm seeing from all the deals I'm analyzing, and you can read my insights, is that they're most, for the most part of it, they're friendly, agreed takeovers. And uh, interestingly enough, we're not uh, hearing from them until almost until the announcement. So I haven't seen, for most cases, any funny uh, share prices hikes weeks before the takeover announcement. Uh, regarding the buyers, uh, we can see both trade buyers and private equity buyers. And as for the private equity buyers, there has been no problem really to place the debt used for M&A, given that uh, everyone is eager for, for being paid to place their money. Regarding the spreads in general, uh, they're not being especially attractive. I mean, as I mentioned, like majority of deals are friendly. So when ARBs can get into the action, uh, the spreads are maybe 1%, between 1% and 2%. Unless one can foresee some companies, and there are some likely candidates in telecoms and, and banking, it is not very easy to to get a good return from that so anyway uh talking about banking sector so what is the context here the ecb 
European Central Bank zero rates policy is hurting profitability of banks. And uh, we can add into that that banks have to keep a lot more capital after the 2008 great crunch. So they're hoarding capital. Besides that, the ECB is discouraging dividend distribution. So what is happening with that? That banks are becoming an uninvestable sector. What is the answer of banks? Well, at least here in Spain, M&A seems the main way to increase profitability via cost reductions, uh, branch closures, accelerated by the trend towards digitalization, efficiency gains, maybe companies are merging, closing one set of headquarters, etc., etc. The ECB uh, is making it easier now and is encouraging consolidation, not only by via press conferences. We can hear uh, Luis de Guindos, VP of the European Central Bank, but only reducing the capital requirements in case of, uh, of a merger. And as I said earlier, banks are trading cheap for a reason. What have we been discussing here in Smart Karma, myself and other analysts? We've been publishing about Kaisa Bank and Bankia. This is in the making and this will happen. This is completely encouraged by the Spanish government. And uh, I, I, I must confess that uh, folks in the market were taken a little bit uh, by surprise by, the, by this one. People were thinking about other potential combinations within Spain, but these guys are going to, uh, are going to, to get the largest uh, bank operating in Spain. You can read uh, there are some interesting discussions about uh, bad will, about the exchange ratio in the insights. Then we can jump into Unica Halibur Bank. Uh, the difference with this one is that you cannot probably deal in size here uh, because uh, the free floats are not that big and the shares are almost trading like penny shares. Which is not surprising because these banks are trading a 0 0.25 price to book or 0 0.3. I mean, uh, these are very cheap. And these banks are well capitalized. Maybe people are fearing uh, the pandemic consequences. People probably think that from next year, well, problem, uh, well, uh, there's, there's going to be a problem uh, with the loans granted, especially to small and medium enterprises. But anyway, Unica Halibur Bank is being discussed and uh, probably in the inside I'll I'll publish soon. I will, um, I will discuss the change ratio. This would be a takeover of uh, Liberbank by Unicaja. And probably we can use as a guide the closing share prices of last Friday. Then I'm going to run a little bit. BBVA Sabadell. This is one being discussed in the market. Sabadell owns CSB in the UK, and Sabadell had a very strong position uh, in Spanish SMEs. And that this was probably its main asset. But then I discussed that the pandemic is going to, is going to have as a bad consequence the, uh, the closure of many small companies and businesses. So some of them may be running into a little bit of a problem there. And then Italy. Regarding telcos, we've seen uh, certainly a lot of uh, telco deals right now. 
the drivers are consolidation. Some markets are crowded, not profitable enough. I can say that if you were living in, in Madrid like myself, maybe you'd be getting every week between three and four phone calls from the main uh, mobile slash fiber operators offering you discounts and trying to lure you into, into their packages. And sometimes even paying the cost of leaving your your uh, your current operator so that means that uh, the situation here is not uh, profitable enough for them and probably happens something similar in other countries in europe it's just that it sounds to me silly that every country has to hear like three four even five uh, national operators when some other countries um, have a lot less. I mean, I'm talking about the US. So anyway, as a result of that, valuations are cheap and they haven't improved much since uh, the onset of the pandemic. What have we been discussing here uh, in, in Smart Karma? We've talked about MassMobile. That has been a successful private equity takeover. Probably the guys thought this is a success story and we can get a lot more out of MassMobile in a few years' time. Press reports that they are trying to acquire Vodafone Spain, whose operations are a complete mess. And uh, something, well, this is almost a done deal, but Polygon is trying to challenge the structure and use for the offer and saying that it's been a little bit of a cozy deal between current management and um, current management of MassMobile and the main shareholders, uh, private equity buyers. It's, it, it is not surprising that uh, management is alongside private equity funds, considering that uh, and I know this for, from good sources, that uh, the CEO of MassMobile has just received a 50 million euro payment. Anyway, as for other deals, uh, Liberty Sunrise, this is what I was mentioning before. Gross spread is 0.7%. So, I mean, there's not much, but unless you can really leverage, and invest on this, well, this is likely to happen. So it's a pretty sure one. Altis Europe, probably the market is thinking that it is too cheap. Uh, the offer from Patrick Drahi is 4.11 euros, and it is trading between 4.11 to 4.14, which is a little bit of a premium. Play Communications, uh, the Polish operator, and Iliad, who wants to, to get a place at the table of the big guys in, uh, in Europe. That one is likely to happen, trading at a gross spread of 1.1. So this is, this is going to happen. I mean, Iliad has got already 40% of play, so it's unlikely any interloper risk what else what else is happening and probably here come the most interesting situations well in other sectors uh the drivers are consolidation digitalization some of the uh, offer announcements are, are opportunistic i mean some sectors company share prices have not yet recovered from march lows or although they're recovering they just got like too, too cheap in March. Take for instance, gaming. And here in a uh, different to the deals uh, seen before, here some of the situations are hostile or even semi-hostile. What have we been, what have we seen here? Well, Garda World, G4S. 
a lot of you guys, uh, you know about this one. The, uh, this company was a little bit of a mess, but management promises that they're like uh, behaving well. Probably no more prisoners will be escaping from their bands. Uh, no more scandals related to uh, not hiring enough people from, for the London Olympics. Not more rioting in prisons because uh, they are that appalling state. So this is what uh, GeForce Management is telling us. And, 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 and they're telling us that, uh, that we should uh, sit alongside them. Uh, the other one, Guard the World, is uh, telling the opposite tell. So, but uh, probably market consensus is that Guard will need to offer more to GeForce shareholders. And some of the main uh, shareholders, there are like two of them with stakes of 10%, uh, we'll want a little bit more in exchange for all the suffering these years. What else? William Hill says, us, well, there's uh, digitalization with all the new lockdowns, people are going a lot less to the betting parlors. So, Cesars is here buying into the US expansion of William Hill. And uh, some analysts think that the opportunity is like really large. There is a, currently William Hill is trading at a 3.6 premium to the offer. Uh, to this offer that I mentioned, some are semi-hostile. I mean, scissors have, uh, have threatened that if other guys are there buying William Hill, uh, he will cancel the contracts with uh, William Hill. So living it in a less ideal situation in the US. So anyway, here there's a uh, digitalization and some private equity guys, they want to, they would like to buy into William Hill just to integrate it with other operations. Violia Suez, this is a deal with many moving parts. Uh, Suez is traveling negotiating and the share price has uh, increased 11% since the announcement and probably it looks like it will increase more. French government favors French champions and I think that the, the uh, what is going to happen here is uh, what French government will basically uh, will desire lvmh tiffany i haven't seen this in detail in a while but it seems to me that uh, lvmh is buying down and negotiating and negotiating trying to negotiate a lower price then uh, well i'm a little bit behind schedule so quickly i'll mention rights issues Recap needs from companies. So there's uh, nothing new that you guys don't know. Uh, the golden rule is go early, go big, or at least I think so. Whether well, the market was close enough for rights issues, some companies are going big, but very, very late. Uh, so, well, uh, we can see it in sectors, the ones I've been like, looking, uh, looking at, such as commercial real estate or there's risk of new lockdowns or transparent related. We've seen a massively discounted rights issues, AIG, Amazon, Rolls Royce. They're so large and they're diluting so much current shareholders that they just cannot not get into this right issue because, well, at least they will. I mean, there's, there's no way the share price will get back to the levels before March, but, uh, unless in a really, 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 really long term. So the guys will buy into that, but, but it's a second IPO. It's, uh, it's like a massive amount of shares coming into market. So short funds are making big gains here, and this is likely to continue. Amazon is, uh, is going down and down and down. Univile, it's not much better in spite of having better assets than Amazon. AIG, hmm. 
well, uncertainty is going to is going to continue. So if I were to be, if I had to take a position, probably I'll be short rather than long. I'm Rolls Royce. That has been a massive, um, excuse my French, screw up by Rolls Royce management. First, they've been saying for months they are trying to look a buyer for ITP Aero uh, for about a billion euros or something, which is one of their divisions that is based here in Spain. Then the share price has been like a sliding down over months, and all of a sudden they just uh, they just try to present like a triumph that they are going to the market um, with shares uh, like price so low. Well, good luck to them. DLCs very quickly. Unilever, uh, you know this one can be traded in size. They're trading at a discount of 1.65 to Unilever, and this discount should close as a result of merger. So finally, after three attempts, after two attempts, this is the third one, they are doing it. So Unilever, uh, MVEGM, that's one, approve the unification, then there'll be a core meeting, electronic voting or resolutions. I think this time should happen. And VHP trading at a 23 premium to PLC. This is large, you know, for the story of the franking credits. I'd rather be long the UK PLC and short the OC uh, uh, branch, well, company. So for the US listings. All goes, discounts. Uh, Swedish holdings have tightened. They widen in March, then they tighten, then widen again. Now they're tightening. Time to unwind and wait for discounts to widen before setting up trades again. Other holding companies try to emulate investor AB. Ideas, Alva is not, it's cheap, but not very liquid. And GBL, GBL is, uh, is uh, massively discounted in spite of their trying to emulate investor. I think the discount here is uh, too wide and uh, should probably short uh, the assets and go on GBL. Short classes spreads, no obvious, but they're like a few names. BMW, Fuchs Petrolog, Henkel, VW, Griffalls, Exxon. I think all of them are interesting ideas. And uh, in some cases, the prefs are trading at the premium, in some others at a discount. But I think they're like a little bit out of uh, what they should be. And with this, I thank you for your patience and for being with me here. And now over to Michael for some questions. Thank you very much, Jesus. This has been quite thorough in a, in a short time, I think. As I said in the beginning, please feel free to send in any questions using your Q&A button on your app. In the meantime, Jesus, I wanted to touch on something that uh, we briefly discussed before as well. Mm -hmm. It seems like spreads in companies with ordinary and preferred shares um, widened a lot and are now back to tightening. And you also wrote uh, a very interesting insight about that uh, recently. So could you talk a bit about that? Yes. I think that those, uh, those spreads, they widen a lot, uh, especially in February, during March, especially until mid-March. Uh, maybe, well, I guess people were unwinding the trades and there was like a little bit of panic trading. Now there, there, there have been like some really good opportunities. Um, and now they're like coming back to normal. Some of them are like trading in a range, like the ones I'm mentioning here, BMW, Henkel, VW is also, is also in that situation, Ericsson as well. And there are some others that I don't really, that I cannot explain very well, such as Fuchs Petrolube. The premium of the preferred shares is 33, almost 
But voting rights are valuable, and this is a family control company. I was thinking, well, maybe the balance, the balance sheet of Fuchs is, uh, has some problems. But no, the company has uh, very little debt. And uh, well, in spite of uh, the uh, turnover and EBITDA coming down this year, the analyst consensus is that, uh, is that uh, the company is not going badly. This is an industrial company. So I probably go along the ordinary shares and so the preferred shares. The only reason why I could think that the preferred shares were going to uh, go up by so much, I mean, the, the premium would be either that the company was facing background bankruptcy and then the shares uh, are above in the pecking order or not really, or, or a lot more liquidity, but the preferred shares are not massively more liquid than the ordinary shares. So, so there it goes. That's an idea. And uh, and the Grey Falls. This is another situation. The B shares are trading at a nearly forty percent discount. The idea here is long Nasdaq shares, long B shares, which are the preferred, short the A shares, which are traded traded in Madrid. Uh, some clients, when, when I had some face-to-face -face client meetings uh, in London, I remember some were, some were asking me if uh, that the main catalyst for the discount to reduce was the conversion of the preferred shares into ordinary shares. But uh, I'm, I'm just saying this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen in the, in the short term unless, uh, unless Grifols needs a lot of money. But uh, they feel comfortable with a capital structure that works for them. And it is not very different from the, uh, this is not very different from the situation of Fresenius a few years ago when Fresenius was high yield. But they, although they acknowledge that they're like a little bit levered by, but they're comfortable. They will reduce it and they think they can do it. I see. Another thing uh, I wondered about, you mentioned how uh, uh, we are seeing zero rates from the ECB now. Um, and I think, we recently heard from the IMF as well that it's a good opportunity for investment to go into infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how much you have looked into this, but if you have, do you think that there could be sectors that bear uh, a closer watching um, because of this? Well, uh, we can have a look into the uh, contractors, maybe European contractors. Uh, companies that should benefit in from this would be Ferrovial, would be uh, ACS, Vinci, etc. Some of the some of the big players should benefit from uh, mm -hmm. from this uh, infrastructure stimulus, I guess. Right. So I think uh, we're just kind of down to the wire. So. I think a good place to uh, to wrap it up. Thank you once again for your thorough presentation, Jesus. And thank you, uh, thank you everyone for attending. Please note that uh, Jesus is available for bespoke re uh, research requests or premium services. So please do contact your Smart Karma account manager in this regard and make sure to check out uh, Jesus's insights uh, on Smart Karma as they go into detail on uh, most uh, things that we've talked about here today. If you have any other questions or comments, uh, please email us at research at smartcarbon.com. We will pass them along. Once again, Jesus, thank you very much. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.